We are here with Deepak Chopra sitting on the couch in the middle of Tulum, Mexico. And we have such an amazing opportunity to chat with him today about one of my favorite topics, which is manifestation, working with the quantum field and living the life that dreams are made of. And Deepak, I'm just so happy you are here because this topic I know is really rich inside your soul as well. And you talk a lot about infinite potential. I would love for you to share what your definition of infinite potential is. Infinite potential is the ground of all existence. And existence uh, is awareness. So there is existence, there's the awareness of existence, and they're synonymous because if you didn't have awareness of existence, mm -hmm. then there's no experience of existence. So the ground of all experience is awareness, mm -hmm. or we can say consciousness. And consciousness doesn't have a form, otherwise you'd be able to see it. It has no boundaries. It, you can't see it because it's what's doing the seeing. And since it has no boundaries, it's obviously infinite, and uh, it's irreducible, it's fundamental, it's without cause. What else can I say about it? It's a field of possibilities. Think of it as a amorphous, non-local, empty field of possibilities. But the field of possibilities bubbles with what you might call uh, qualia form. I'm not using quantum terms. Qua quantum is a measurement of experience. Qualia is the actual experience. So. Right now you're experiencing colors, shapes, forms, you know, moods, thoughts, sensations, images, feelings, thoughts. None of these is actually quantum. It's, it's a quality of experience. You can measure it and then you can say, oh yeah, this is the uh, mathematical correlate of this experience. So consciousness inherently is also unstable. You, it's so much in equilibrium and a perfectly equilibrium system is not right. possible. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it starts with experience. The business of consciousness is to be conscious. Yes. So because consciousness is without subject-object split, mm -hmm. it can only experience itself as subject and object by dividing itself mm -hmm. into what we say, the seer or the scenery, or mm -hmm. the knower and the known, or uh, the subject and the object. So when you say qualia, so qualia is the invisible and quantum is what we're seeing in the physical? Is that what you're no, saying? How no, does qualia is any color, any shape, any form, any tone, any mood, any feeling, any image, any thought. Okay. And, and quantum? Quantum is a measurement. Gotcha. How quantum do you measure the quantum in the physical dimension? Well, scientists uh, measure quantum through experiments mm -hmm. and uh, uh, through what is called the observer effect. They don't talk about quantum at this level of experience. Okay. okay so. so how do how does one influence the quantum field with conscious intention? Yeah. You know, I've gotten away from the quantum term oh, you have? Okay. because I realized that it's uh, what you call a, a construct. Mm -hmm. It's not an experience. Nobody's actually seen a quantum. A quantum is defined as the smallest unit of energy and information in which waves of energy are either emitted or absorbed. And those kinds of experiments are done at places like Hadron Collider, etc., mm -hmm. where they look for particles, gotcha. Higgs fields, etc. And so the field of possibilities, I no longer think of it as a quantum field. Wow. Okay. I think of it as a qualia field. Ah, wow. And uh, qualia, qualia field, I qualia, love it. Yeah. Qualia means quality of experience. Wow. So, you know, think of awareness bubbling with qualities of awareness, mm -hmm. which we then, as human beings, we kind of 
it's all jumbled up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, colors, sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, all jumbled. Mm -hmm. But then we as humans have the capacity to construct what we call objects out there, but they're not out there, they're still in the field. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a delusion. So if I asked you, what are you looking at there, you'd say a tree. If I asked you, what is this uh, hand? Uh, if I asked you, what is this? It's a watch. Mm -hmm. But let's say you were a baby and you hadn't been programmed mm -hmm. into human constructs. Right. And you still didn't have any language. Mm -hmm you'd see just colors, shapes, forms. So you wouldn't actually see a separation between the physical and the non-physical? You would not, in fact, experience physicality, we're guessing. Gotcha. You would see colors, feeling, sense. Just think of this acronym, S-I-F-T, sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. Mm -hmm. That's all we experience. Mm -hmm. The rest is a human story. Gotcha. In, in the deeper reality, there's no such thing as a physical body or a physical universe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a human construct for qualia. Mm -hmm. And so if someone is living their life and they're going through pain in their life or they want to shift into a better life experience, how do you work with qualia in the field to shift the experience? It's actually even simpler than that, that. You don't directly work with qualia. What you do is, you know, very practical, classical uh, way, uh, which has been used for thousands of years, mm -hmm. are the eight limbs of yoga. Mm -hmm. So the first limb is yama, which means principles of social intelligence. The second is niyama, which is emotional intelligence. You master those first. Yes. Then, through yogic practice, you begin to realize that your body is not physical. If you say, I have a physical body, then you have a problem. Which one did you, you know, you, the body is not a noun, it's a verb. So, you know, it was first a fertilized egg, then it was a zygote, then it was an embryo, then it's a baby, then it's a toddler. Of course, you identify with this, but this is very transient and momentary. Mm -hmm. Even this is not the same as it was a few hours ago or will be a few minutes ago or in the future. So what is this? This is a bunch of qualia that humans call a physical body, but it's an interpretation of perceptual activity in the field of awareness. So the way the yogis go about is first emotional and social intelligence because if you're emotionally distraught and you don't know or socially not connected, there isn't anything to begin with. Right. So then the, third, the foundation. Yeah. yeah. Then the third step is what they call yoga or yoga asana, which you everybody knows what that is these days. <laughs> because there's a yoga studio every block. A lot of people will skip the first couple of steps and go straight to yeah. the asana. And the asana literally in Sanskrit means a seat of awareness. So even the poses, okay, like you say, happy child, happy baby, you know, cat, cow, or, you know, uh, all the poses have names because they induce states of awareness. And the ultimate goal of uh, the asanas is to actually realize that the body is not physical, it's a field of awareness. So that's the third step. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, the person who wrote the original text of um, yoga, which every yoga, yogic teaching is based on that, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. So from the third step, he moves to pranayam, which is breathing. And he teaches us how to regulate the body through breath. There are hundreds of breathing techniques. So that's the fourth. The fifth is withdrawal of the senses and what we call interoceptive awareness. Now, every child is taught that. We call it toilet training. Mm -hmm. um, but then we stop. You know, once a child learns to uh, regulate their bowels, their, you know, bladder, we stop. But the yogi said the same thing you can do to regulate your endocrine system, your immune system, your mm. cardiovascular mm, system, etc. So that's the fifth, and that's called, in Sanskrit, it's called Pratyahara. Mm -hmm. But I think the English word would be interoceptive awareness. Perception mm -hmm. is what's out there, interoception is what's in here. 
And then the last three are for manifestation, which are dharna, which means focused intention, dhyan, which means meditation, and samadhi, which means transcendence. Mm -hmm. So the yogi can manifest anything. Mm -hmm. Let's repeat those three again. Dharna, focused, mm -hmm. focused attention, and intention, and intention. Dhyan, meditation, meditation, and Samadhi transcendence. transcendence. So this is in the second chapter of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali where he also, you know, people interpret that as psychic powers by location, looking at the future, knowing past lives, predicting death, remoting, remote healing, knowledge of the body, on and on. Yeah. But those last three steps need a lot of preparation. Yeah, I actually remember, and I actually teach this with a lot of my students, I always share this. I read it in a book of yours many, many years ago about the analogy of the lake mm. and the still yeah, lake. Yeah, that's part of Dharma and mm -hmm. Dhyan, yes. And throwing that pebble into the lake. Could you share that? I would love, love yeah, everyone to hear know, that. If you have a still pond, that is a still mind. Mm -hmm. Actually, even that's not right. Still pond is absence of mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's, because the mind is never at peace. It, you know, we use words like peace of mind. It's an oxymoron. <laughs> it's an oxymoron because the mind is always fluctuating. So, first step is you settle into awareness. That's the still pond. Mm -hmm. And there's absence of mind there. Mm -hmm. Then you introduce what is called a subtle intention. You introduce an intention, you let go of it, you get back into awareness. So, you know, it's the analogy was you throw a pebble in a still pond and you get a ripple. And if it's not a still pond, it's a turbulent ocean, you can even throw the Empire State Building, nothing yeah. will happen. So the still pond is awareness, the pebble is intention, and the ripple is manifestation. Mm, absolutely beautiful. How long have you been practicing that in your life, would you say? 40 years. 40 years, yeah. wow. What would you say that something that you put in the pond for yourself that came back? Right. These days, mm -hmm. in my stage of life, I actually am preparing for my physical death mm -hmm. okay. and um, going into other dimensions of experience. Okay. And so when you are sitting with that, what's arising for you? Like, is there a fear that comes up in terms of the waves in the pond or you're able no, to... No, you know, the, the essential religious or spiritual experience is only three things. Mm -hmm. The first is what we call transcendence, the last step in yoga. Mm -hmm. The second is the emergence of platonic values like truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, love, compassion, joy, mm -hmm. equanimity. And the third is loss of fear of death. So that's where I wow. actually I'm doing a series on the mystery of death right now on YouTube. You are. I did chapter four today. Well, wow, how do you You'll feel? It, how do you feel about the concept of death? Like, with your intimacy with you it. You just said it. It's a yeah. concept. It's not truth. What dies is your selfie, not yourself. Wow. This wow. thing is a selfie. Beautiful. It's a, it's, it is a it's, selfie. It's, it's just a projection uh -huh, of consciousness. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm sure it's everyone. It's a qualia program. Everyone watching this right now is like, Deepak, don't die! <laughs> They've probably got more I fear than you. <laughs> you don't die because you were never born. Yeah, wow, that's okay. powerful. That's that which is born is a qualia program. Mm -hmm. Like mm. any program, you know, it is like every story has a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a story. So, mm -hmm. you know, of course, as kids, we were taught uh, they lived happily ever after. Well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. stories have... Mm -hmm. Everything, divine, diabolical, crisis, mm -hmm. redemption, death, yeah. resurrection. Mm -hmm. So if you're a part of the larger field and this is an illusion in your awareness and all the spiritual practices that you've done throughout your life, are you aware of a greater intelligence working through you as you versus the separate you, I? You are the greater intelligence. Yeah. The rest is a human construct. Mm -hmm. And, and that greater intelligence is not personal, it's mm -hmm. non-local. As I said, it's irreducible, fundamental, without cause, and uh, spaceless and timeless and infinite. Mm -hmm. And would you say that that greater intelligence, if it is truly the greater intelligence, can you surrender your life completely to it and let it kind of take over your whole 
software system to live its yeah, expression through you? Ultimately, that's what happens. There's loss of sense of agency. Yeah. And did you go through that in your life? Yeah, I'm living that. Oh, you're living that. Okay, wow. <laughs> and how did that feel in the initial stages of like the fight? Was there a fight with the ego? Yeah, there is a phenomenon that's well known in every yeah. spiritual tradition. It's called the dark night of the soul. Yeah where you have to let go of your um, provisional identity. You have to let the selfie go. Uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> That's the real death right there, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the death of a construct. Mm -hmm, the death of a uh, construct. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to people who are going through a journey like that, going through the dark night of the soul to offer go them some it. support? You, be, uh, you know, beyond the fire, you could don't go around the fire. You have to go through the fire. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people, I, I, even I can feel that in my own life, like I've gone through a lot of invitations to mm -hmm. surrender to a deeper intelligence in my life mm -hmm. and to let go or let go and let God come through. Um, but there is that peace where it's like letting go into the unknown as well, right? Well, but we live and breathe in the unknown. The known is a prison of past conditioning. Everything mm -hmm. you know has already happened. Mm -hmm. From this second onwards, everything mm -hmm. is unknown. Mm -hmm. Wow. Unknown is the reality. So is there, is there safety in that? Can you find, I, I guess the safety it's, is in it's connecting the only to it. It's safety. Without uncertainty, without the unknown, there wouldn't be mm -hmm. creativity. We'd all be biological robots. <laughs> but wow. Which most yeah. people are. Yeah, yeah most people are. More and more by the day. Gosh, 99% okay. yes. of people are biological robots. They're algorithms. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so these eight limbs of yoga are really uh, yeah, that's a guide. That's book, by the way. Uh, that's your new book. That just came out last week. Oh, what's the name of it? Living in the light. Living in the light. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, if you guys are interested in experiencing living in the light, which I know we all do, go and check out Deepak's book. I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. And just thank you for your wisdom, Deepak. Thank you, thank you for your embodiment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a total honor to share it's with you. Lovely to be here with yeah. you. And explore more of this in our seminar tonight. Yes, wonderful. We're here at Zen Experience, so check it out. There'll be more to come.